are Cocoa Pops racist? I shall tell you who believes that they are. Fiona Onasanya. Now, you'll know that she's the former MP, and she sent a tweet saying that she's written to Kellogg's UK. And she actually wrote to Kellogg's on Twitter. So she did an at Kellogg's. And she said, as you are yet to reply to my email, Cocoa Pops and Rice Krispies have the same composition, except for the fact that Cocoa Pops are brown and chocolate flavoured. So I was wondering why Rice Krispies have three white boys representing the brand and Cocoa Pops have a monkey. 0344-499-1000 is the number to call. Are we eating a racist breakfast cereal? By giving your children Cocoa Pops for breakfast in the morning, are you unknowingly confirming some racial bias? Perhaps one day you eat Rice Krispies and one day you eat Cocoa Pops and you'd never actually realised that Cocoa Pops were seen as problematic. 03444991000 is the number to call. Is there an argument here to say that Cocoa Pops are racist? Or do you listen to this and think, maybe things are going a bit far and maybe now there's a danger that some may be accused of almost looking for prejudice where it isn't always there. 03444991000. But I say that cautiously because I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I have to be honest. If I'm looking at Cocoa Pops, I've never eaten a bowl of Cocoa Pops and thought that I'm committing some sort of racial hate crime. I like Cocoa Pops. They turn the milk chocolatey. That's one of the things I like most about them. And they used to be advertised. Now, I remember on the front of a bowl of Coke, on the front of a packet of Cocoa Pops, it used to be a really big gorilla hanging from a tree years ago. This is when they very first came out. I actually remember Cocoa Pops when they came out, right? I remember the first advertising campaign for Cocoa Pops. It must have been maybe late 70s, early 80s when Cocoa Pops came out. And um, it used to be a really, really big gorilla hanging from a tree and then a couple of years later they made the Cocoa Pops character who I think was a little chimp with a cap on right Coco Coco was it Coco the chimp was that what it was called or just Coco Coco okay I mean I suppose if you go however many I mean her point is this right you have Rice Krispies which is the same cereal but white. It hasn't had the chocolate flavouring. And she says, look, Rice Krispies have got the three boys on the front with the bowl, smiling and happy on the front, and yet you've got the same cereal in chocolate, and you've got a monkey on the front. Now, Fiona Onasanya is saying that I was wondering why Rice Krispies have three white boys representing the brand, and Cocoa Pops have a monkey zero three double four four double nine one thousand is there an argument to say that there is racial prejudice in some breakfast cereals and can you think of any other examples of maybe day-to-day -day items oh, this is a genuine question i'm not trying to be sarcastic though i won't lie my taxi driver on the way in i had a fabulous taxi driver on my way in last night Matthew, Nigerian fella. He's listened to me on the radio for years. And um, he was a, a, a lovely gentleman. And he was black. That was his ethnicity, obviously, native Nigerian. And so I asked him a couple of the things. You know, we got chatting on the way in. And the first question I asked him was, are Cocoa Pops racist? And he essentially said it was the most stupid thing he'd ever heard in his life. The other thing he said, though, which I thought was very interesting, because then we got talking about racism and, of course, Black Lives Matter and the climate that we're in at the moment. And he said something really interesting. He said that in Nigeria, children are taught about the horrors of slavery 
but they're also taught in great detail about the work of William Wilberforce to abolish slavery. So actually in Nigeria he said they come out with quite a balanced opinion and he was saying without putting words into his mouth that he doesn't really have a problem with the UK today because in his education he was very much informed of the work of William Wilberforce as I said and he feels here in the UK that we don't do enough to inform people about the positive steps we've taken in order to abolish slavery. For instance, he was saying, and again, this is what he said to me, that obviously, as you know, slave owners were compensated in order to stop slavery. And obviously that's seen as a very, very controversial thing years later, because of course, compensating slave owners rather than those who are the victims of slavery obviously seems a bit backward years later doesn't it? Right? Right. Well, he was saying that actually, sorry, but they see it as quite a good thing that slave owners were compensated. Not because terrible people got money, but because it was proof that the British state and the British taxpayer was prepared to put their hand in their pocket and compensate slave owners and spend money to free these people. And he was saying that not enough credit is given to the UK for doing that. And it's just a point of view, really, but I hadn't really thought about it in that way. And actually, some of what we did, although abhorrent, and he was not pulling any punches in what the Britain did as being quite abhorrent at times, but he was saying that actually there needs to be maybe a slightly different focus. And you know what? Maybe there's some truth to that. Um, who should we talk to first? Let's go to Rena, who is in Scotland. Evening to you, Rena. Good evening, Crystal. Thanks for taking the time to uh, call us tonight. How are you tonight, my love? Yes, yes, I'm not too bad. Just mm -hmm. isolating and doing them as I'm told, which I find quite hard. <laughs> OK, well, I'm telling you that when you eat your breakfast cereal, you are racist. Well, I'm telling you mm -hmm. that until I heard on the radio this evening mm -hmm. that I like Cocoa Pops, I'm white. Racist. I like Cocoa Pops. Racist. Because. Really, really, really racist. You're white and you eat cocoa, but that is all. That's all. Like, I actually think Ofcom might get in touch with us for actually for breaking broadcasting rules because of your blatant prejudice that you've displayed, well, Irina. Well, I, I didn't know until I heard tonight. Okay. No, I'm pulling your leg. So, okay, you eat Cocoa Pops. What do you make of what the uh, former MP Fiona Onasanya has said about Cocoa Pops, that they are racist? I have never, ever heard anything in my life so unbelievable. Until you spoke tonight and said there was three white boys, I like Rice Krispies as well, by mm. the way, three boy, white boys on the Rice Krispies yeah. and a monkey on the Coca Pot. Yeah. Do you know that? I never even noticed. Well, I mean, I isn't that the point, though? Isn't it? Okay, we're, we're joking about it, but actually, Rena, that's not something I noticed either, but is there not an argument to say and again, I'm just very conscious. I presume you're a white woman. I'm a white fella. Are we not perhaps being a bit flippant? And should we not be listening to someone who is non-white telling us that something is possibly racist? For instance, you know, as a gay fella myself, and I know I bang on about it a bit, but, you know, I expect if someone, if I say to someone, Oi, that's homophobic, I expect them to know that I know what I'm talking about because I'm a gay fella. So are we being maybe a little bit arrogant here? Are we maybe missing something? And should we be listening to what she's got to say? Well, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, you say you're gay. I don't care what you are. I like your programme. I like the sound of your voice. Oh, bless you. It makes no difference to me what, but, what but, but But the point is, though, and shouldn't you listen to that minority to tell you when prejudice is taking place? Yeah, but, the, I mean, uh, honestly, Kristen, if all we, that's all we had to worry about was Cocoa Pops and a monkey in the box and the three, three white boys and the Rice Krispies, actually, life wouldn't be too difficult to deal. This is going beyond a joke. Mm. And it's the same with this, or just a quick one of it, that people lining up for three hours to buy it. I think I would rather sit naked in the house before I would dream of standing in a queue for three hours to get myself a dress. 
Do you know, I, I can guarantee that I would disperse that queue if there was photos of me naked in my house. Frankly. They would run <laughs> well, the other way. I'm quite sure that I would be much the same way as them just saw me, but I'm just making the point. No way! Why do you think people are like that? Because I think we saw a similar sort of mentality before lockdown, didn't we, with people stony-faced queuing up for things that they didn't really need and look i'm a capitalist i love my stuff i love shopping i love buying things uh, however i'm also quite aware that they probably don't make you very very happy deep down why what do you think is going on why do you think people think that they need to queue up for that amount of time to get a pound really, off something i really i'll be honest with you i mean i'm a woman as you obviously know shopping has never been one of my things. I mean, I would really need to be getting pushed to the limit to go out. My daughter say, oh, come on, Mum, let's go out and get it done. Like, no, 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 I don't need them. My word is so... I just don't get... I don't get it. I mean, I'm 85 years of age. Okay, so I've 85. lived a long time. And I've seen a lot of things in these years. Mm. But I just don't get this at all. And I'm not unintelligent. I just can't get my head around any of it. Do you I feel a little bit, and, and and I don't want to allude to your age too much, but do you feel sometimes, Rena, as a, a lady of a certain age, do you get a bit confused about what's right and what's wrong nowadays and what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say? Or, or do you no. think... No, good. I, I, I def God bless, I'm not... Um, not at that stage yet. No, no, no I don't. I don't mean it from a health point of view. I mean from a political correctness point of view. I meant that that you no. know nowadays, for instance, cocoa pops are seen as racist. Certain things you can't say or do. You, you don't have a problem navigating through any of that. Now, what they could do, hmm. they should get onto Kellogg's. Is it Kellogg's that make them? Yeah, I think she has. But go on. Let's put the three white boys and the cocoa pops, and we'll put the monkey on the box with the Rice Krispies. Well, in fairness, a lot of people have pointed out that the, the that some American boxes of Cocoa Pops, I think they're called Choco Krispies, they do have the three white boys on, so therefore it doesn't actually apply what the uh, former MP Fiona on Asanya is saying, because there are versions of Cocoa Pops, I think they're called Cocoa Krispies, and they do yeah. have the three white boys on there. Thank well, you, uh, Rena. Really good to talk to you.